Hey, hey, look who's back. It's Charlie. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for episode 20 of Supernatural Season 8, Pac-Man Fever. This is the return of Charlie Bradbury. We learn more about her character, her past, and we see more of the deterioration of what's going on with Sam from the trials, as well as a different version of a Jin. Now, I understand that I've made comments about Andrew Dabb changing the lore of characters and things and whatnot in mythology and just the overall lore of the show in the latter seasons. I haven't really said much about it for Carver yet because it hadn't really been superbly obvious. This one it is. It's not bad though. It's just like, a, oh, hey, it's just a slightly different version of a Jin. It's not the complete changing of the Jin because this is one where it's turning people into big fat sacks of jelly and making them explode. Ah! But before we get to that, they actually find out that Charlie is nearby via some weird hacky backy thing and she's just saying oh she's there for a con but it's kind of cool how the brothers know that there's something off and eventually they start doing their own research about her they find her own place and they find out that she has a mom who is brain dead from a car accident that we will eventually realize happened because she asked her mom to come pick her up because she was homesick while at a sleepover years before. I was at a sleepover and I got scared. I called my parents to come and get me. Who should never have been driving that night. I just want to tell her that I'm sorry. And what I liked about this episode is it played on grief. The brothers, especially Dean, are very well known for grief and the slight little bit of hypocrisy that he's saying that you got to let her go considering he has not done that with Sam on multiple occasions. It was interesting to see him just be like, you know what, you can't have everything. Some things you just have to let go. And that is going to kind of, kind of coalesce with how the season's going to end in terms of what is more important, your family or your own sake. This was a really hard hitting one for Charlie. There, there's a lot of good humor in it. I like the very wackadoo start with Dean in essentially the COD zombie level and then it coming back to them at the end and Charlie being this super awesome badass. The reason, the whole key, the crux of what the Jin is doing is it's feeding off of fear and it's not the fear of the zombie vampire thingies that are attacking them. It's not the fear of the levels getting harder. It's the fear of losing, of having to let go of her mom. And even for Dean seeing uh, Sam in the hospital bed, which I actually now just realized, having said that for the end of this season, it's going to be quite hypocritical beginning of the next one. <laughs> but there's also some pretty interesting people in this one. We've got Manny Janko, uh, apologies for that, but he was one of the best characters of The Good Place. Uh, he was Jason. Jason was hilarious. Stupid, but hilarious. We also have Linda Bond who has played a character before in this show. She plays Fortuna in the episode of season 15 where there is oh, the gamblers, the one that had, you know, the, the game of pool and luck and whatnot. I remember, I knew right when I saw her, I recognized her. Turns out she's in fact the Jen. And I actually liked that little twist. I thought that was a good kind of twist that her being the coroner, it makes sense. The only and very, very poor very obvious negative about this episode is that apparently she had a son and my camera just died either way the son element was dumb i thought this was such a stupid character to have in it was so stupid it was so useless it was so pointless you could have just had the gen but no you had to have some really random thing thrown in at the very end and eh, i don't know i thought it was a bit of a half-ass attempt at putting this into the end <laughs> Otherwise, though, I like the story with Charlie. I like her own struggle, her own dealing with grief in this. And I liked how it coalesced with the Jin and had some cool, fun elements. And it's a very bonding episode between her and Dean. I thought that was really well done. So in the end, I am going to be very, very generous for this episode. And I'm going to give Pac-Man Fever a 6 out of 7. I really liked it. I liked Charlie's story. I think it was very well done. I think it was very well executed kind of funny considering Robert Singer's in this one but he's not fully lazy yet but those are my thoughts about this episode guys let's see what you guys had to say Pac-Man Fever was a good episode and always good to see Charlie I like the fact that we can go deeper into her past and see what happened to her 
I, I did too. It gave more dimension to her character and made us like more about her, right? I thought that was really well done. Pac-Man Fever is my favorite Charlie episode in the show in terms of her character. I love how the writers wanted to delve deeper into her backstory. It's always good to see her and Dean come closer together as brother and sister. The episode also really sh does well showing Sam's increasingly becoming unwell due to the trials. And I love that Dean can come back to his roots, taking care of him like he was when he was little, even if he's kind of uh, about the cooking. We're the growing tensions of the trials causing uncertain fears for Dean towards Sam, it makes sense that the monster of the week would be a Jin. I still think it's a pretty good twist that the son left the trail for the hunters opposed to the mom. Eh, I don't know. I feel like it was such a tacked on thing because they literally threw it in and then Sam just kills them. I thought, I was like, what? this went nowhere. Um, the action set pieces, it's a great callback to season three when the brothers use the African dream route to go rescue Charlie like they did for Bobby. Oh, I get it, yeah. Oh, I like that little callback as well. Sam knocking out Dean plays Rent Free in My Head. The action set pieces and set design are really well established in the episode as well. It would have been funny to see Dean and Charlie look like video game characters with video game graphics, but the episode is serviceable. Yeah, they wouldn't have had the budget for that. We're in going into reboot here. I love how they were trapped in the video game. Dan, Dan, Dean sees Sam comato comatose as a foreshadowing to season 9's opener. The end scene with Charlie reading The Hobbit to her mom is one last time is beautifully captured. I think that was what gave me the six at rating at the end because yeah, I love that part too. I love this episode. Oh my God, Patrick, this is like a tome. Like, thank you. Just try and make it a little bit <laughs> uh, a little bit more concise next time. Charlie is perfect. She and Dean are such a great sibling pair. I love their banter. It's always comedic gold and a montage was great. I love how Charlie makes Dean more honest about his geek side. Plus, it's nice to see Dean open up so easily with her and catch up with all the drama in life, not just with Sam, but also events about Cass, which is something he's been hesitant to do with Sam. Also, another sibling moment was when Dean casually and geniusly tricked her into getting the, her to give him her phone so he could place a GPS and have her keep an eye on her in case. But aside from the laughs, these two nailed it with, with the serious moments. When Dean told uh, Charlie's comatose mom she would be proud of her, you could tell he meant it and it was so touching to see Dean help Charlie with make peace with her mom. It was also nice to see Charlie's full backstory. It's refreshing to see someone's life complicated uh, before they ran into the brothers and some, like it was already complicated. Though with all that praise, there are two things I wanted to bring up. They're, they aren't deal breakers or nitpicks. You can just simply overlook them. One is something that feels off and the other is a missed opportunity. The thing that fell off was Sam and Dean's plot, po subplot. Don't get me wrong, the shocked look on Sam's face when Dean hugged him when Sam was expecting a fight to fight it. Touching fit touching what but they went the whole dean being overprotective subplot like being in a default what with him liking worrying about sam not doing the trials and even wrote a brief scene where dean ditched sam and charlie and of course the whole letting go thing that tied in with charlie's mom the reason it feels off is because sam, dean is right sam was in no physical condition to be on the hunt and while fighting kevin is important to the brothers the brothers don't know Crowley is involved, so they don't have a sense of urgency, plus they have no leads. Also, it, it keeps putting in importance of the trials. Wouldn't it make sense for not to make Sam risk his life on random cases? The writers tried to make Sam relevant, but it failed. He did kill the de the Jin kid, but only because the writers made him stupidly obvious. <laughs> and aside from the actor just phoning it in and that twist, it shouldn't have been surprising. The brothers already found out that no Jin was went through the personal records, it would have stated she had a son. As for the missed opportunity, I wanted Sam and Charlie to have a moment together or at least talk. The writers do know that they have a character with meaningful interactions in both brothers in the episode. It's not like he didn't have personal things to talk about, like how he feels about the trial. He is he worried he's going to die? How has it felt how it felt to be in hell again? How he feels about Benny, a man he hated, had sacrificed himself for him and how it felt seeing Bobby again, and the fact that Bobby suffered 120 plus years in hell because he and Dean burnt the flask. Not their fault, but I know that is guilt-ridden. Actually, yeah, you're bringing up a lot of, like, it, the more you think about it, the more there's holes in it. And I guess they just kind of hope that no one would think about it. I admittedly hadn't thought about a lot of it, so yeah, you bring up some good points there. Like I said, thank you for the comment. Just make it a little bit more concise if you can next time. It was great seeing Charlie in the episode. It was sad learning about her past. I understand Dean was worried about Sam since the trials are literally taking a toll on Sam. I absolutely enjoyed seeing Dean and Charlie spending time together. They really do act like brother and sister to me. And seeing Charlie basically become a hunter in training, glad to see Dean was able to help Charlie finally realize what had happened to her parents wasn't her fault. 
and to let her mother go. Absolutely. Ah, Charlie, really is the life this midseason needs. Not really sure where she learned to sh how to shoot, but like, whatever. Also, a bit of a wasted opportunity for her to not know the reasons uh, the killings happened. Would have made an interesting parallel for her since it's her mo it's a mother looking out for a child. Oh, another good point there. Like I said, I have a feeling maybe that might have been an idea. There might have been a deleted scene because, like I said, the child of the Jin sounds so tacked on and it feels so tacked on. So, yeah, maybe you might have had an idea there. Okay, guys, we are now moving on to The Great Escapist, so make sure to give me your guys' thoughts about that episode. This is the introduction of Metatron, so please give me your thoughts about that in the comments below, and I'll read those off in the next review. Until then, guys, I hope you guys have been enjoying the reviews. If you have, leave a like, and if you're interested more, subscribe. Until then, I'll see you guys next week.